Hey there, this is Seth Morris from DevExpress, and I wanted to talk about a brand new feature we've added in version 2010, volume 2. In this version, we gave the, the possibility to override the saving and the loading mechanism of the report designer so that you yourself can direct exactly where these reports go. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is the end user report designer. I'm going to go ahead and create a new report in the end user report designer. And notice that this is report one. I'm going to drag uh, some fields on there and a shape. Then preview it and show you that this is a regular and standard report. Now, the difference is when you save the report, there is a new dialog box that comes up. This dialog box was created by simply making a new form and also will override the way we save it. So let's hit OK. And there's the report. Let's create a new report. In this report, we're going to put a table and a line. Let's save this one as well. Notice that this save report dialog box also comes up. I'm going to hit OK. Now, let's close them and let's open them up. When I open them up, there's this open report dialog box, which incidentally is the same one. And when I pick a report, it's going to reload it. Let me open the other one and load that. Okay, now for the interesting part. What about sub reports? When I make this a little bit bigger, then I'm going to drag on a sub report right here. And notice that when I select the sub report, when it comes to the report source URL, which is another report, notice that I can pick report two. Let me select that. So remember what report two looks like, has this uh, table and this line. Report one has this text box and this shape. Let me hit preview. And notice that indeed both report one and report two are rendered using this sub report. Let me show you how this is done. Okay, the first thing I want to show you is exactly where we're saving these reports to. We, I've set up this little XSD file that has an ID of a report, the URL, which is the name that we see, the content, which is a byte array of the layout, when we created it and when we modified it. The next thing that I've set up is this save report dialog box that has a grid control built into it. This grid control is getting its data from this XSD file. Then we have an OK and a cancel. The last and most important piece is this custom report storage class. Let me go through each of the actual methods that I've overridden and what they do. The first is this. How do we actually store the report? And this is data that I put in there. I'm storing this particular list of reports in a report storage.xml file. And what I'm doing is I'm using these particular methods to help me save them. This layout array method, all it does is it saves the layout of a report to a memory stream and then writes out the byte array. Now, the actual methods that we override. Can set data is there to be able to specify whether or not a particular URL or name of a report is editable. For example, in your organization, there might be some reports that only certain people can save or edit. You can, you can override this here. Get data is simply getting the array of bytes for that particular report specified in the URL. The next is the get new URL. The get new URL allows you to open existing reports. Okay, these two methods are there to allow us to pick the standard URLs. You recall when we edited the sub-report, we were allowed to pick from other report URLs for a sub-report, and this is what these are for. For example, in this particular method, we don't want a sub-report to reference the master report. Otherwise, we have this reference that doesn't end and could cause problems, so we want to be able to filter that out. The next is whether or not a URL is valid. 
this particular method actually saves an existing report, this saves a new report, but I've wired in such a way that this one does both. In other words, if the report URL exists, then we're gonna override it, otherwise we're gonna save a new one. The last thing that we need to do is we need to tell the application to use this custom report storage. To do that, I view the code in the main form and I show you that all you really need to do is register this extension. Okay, let's step through these methods. Okay, here's the report designer. We're going to create a new report. And I'm going to drag a checkbox and a shape. Now I'm going to hit save. Notice that immediately the set new data function is called. I create a dialog box that has the data set of the currently saved reports and then the default URL, which is the URL that was given when the report was created. Then I do show dialog. Notice that this dialog box comes up. We want to give it a new name and hit save or OK. Notice that the dialog result is OK. I pull the name from the dialog box and what I do is I check to see if it already exists. So if it's a valid URL and it does not exist, I'm going to go ahead and save it. First I'm going to change the display name to the proper URL then I'm going to set the data. Notice I'm pulling it again to see if it exists and notice that in this instance it's null. So I go down, create a new report, save the storage ID, and then add the row to the data set. Once that's done, I write out the XML. And there it is. Now, let's hit a breakpoint on the open and see what happens. Remember that this was the open method. Let's go back and run it. Notice when I hit open, I automatically create this new dialog box. I say that I don't know what the report name is. And enable text simply means, hey, we're actually choosing a report and not typing one in. And that automatically tells the dialog box that it is indeed an open dialog box. Let me hit F10 and show the dialog box. There you go. Let's open report two. When I do that, notice I get the name back and then it goes and checks if it's valid. Then as before, it gets the data. Notice that again, I'm pulling it from this particular storage method, which is a report table. If it exists, then I'm gonna return it. Otherwise, I'm gonna return nothing. There you go. Let's open another one. Here it is again, let's open report one. There it is as before. Let's open another one. My new report. And there it is. Let's add a sub report again. Let me move this up here so that there's a little bit more room. And let's set this sub report. And now let me set the breakpoint so you can see exactly where the report source URLs are coming from. Okay, when I hit the down arrow, notice it goes here. And this is what I'm doing. Let me hit F10. If this particular instance is a sub report, I'm going to get the instance and I'm going to make sure that the reports that are listed are is not going to be the root report because that would cause a cyclical dependency. So I go ahead and say OK. Return this particular queryable where the ID is not the same as the storage ID. Hit F5 and you'll see in a second when I go back 
that it is indeed pulling the right reports. So notice all we've really done is filtered out this my new report. So let's pick report two and let's preview. There it is. Notice that report two does indeed have these table cells and this line. Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to get a hold of me. Thanks for watching and thank you for choosing DevExpress. Express.